Welcome to Measures of Oral Expression, a measure comparison presented by me, Lisa Beauvais, for the University of Oregon. Oral language, written language, reading, and mathematics represent four achievement domains that are critical to educational success. Within the oral language domain exists listening, comprehension, and oral expression. For the purpose of this presentation, I will focus on oral expression. I have chosen the construct of oral expression because of its cross-curricular importance and because issues with oral expression can lead to problems with acquisition of reading and writing. Because these skills are often developed early in life, children with limited oral expression ability at the time they enter kindergarten are typically at a distinct disadvantage. The construct of oral expression is defined as the ability to communicate thoughts, ideas, or needs verbally using appropriate language structures. Students can demonstrate their oral expression in a number of ways. Students can share stories, make predictions, express their opinions, and communicate with peers during recess or in cooperative learning groups. The two measures I will be comparing are the Weschler Individual Achievement Test, 3rd edition, also known as the Wyatt 3, and the Kaufman Test of Educational Achievement, 2nd edition, also known as the KT2. I have selected these measures because both are used in my district and are easily accessible at my school site. While both measures cover a broad range of academic domains, both measures also have comparable subtests of oral expression. The Wyatt 3 is an individually administered achievement test designed for students 4 years 6 months to 19 years 11 months. It defines the construct of oral expression as the ability to produce spoken language and it includes expressive vocabulary, oral word fluency, and sentence repetition. The KT2 is also an individually administered achievement test, and it is designed for examinees from four years, six months, to 25 years. Both measures define the construct of oral expression in a very similar way, though the KT2 specifically does not include sentence repetition. Both the Y3 and the KT2 are intended to be used in clinical, educational, and research settings. They are both intended to identify academic strengths and weaknesses, pinpoint areas needing remediation or enrichment, and determine eligibility of services. Students scoring above or below grade level in specific areas are designated with a learning disability or as gifted, and would therefore qualify for an individualized education plan, otherwise known as an IEP. The results of both measures are used in my district to make placement decisions as well as programming decisions. During course planning and programming, the number of students with identified learning disabilities is considered. Most interestingly, the KT2 has identified an intended purpose to compare scores between the oral expression subtest and the written expression subtest in order to identify specific written output disorders. The KT2 also analyzes student errors. This analysis can be used as an aid in individualized instruction, as well as to support instructional interventions. The image I created here lists the 16 different types of subtests of the Wyatt 3. It has one form and the entire test can take anywhere from 30 to 145 minutes depending on the examinee's grade level, performance, and behavior during tests. Comparatively, the KT2 consists of the comprehensive form and the brief form. It has eight major components and 14 subtests. The comprehensive form comes in form A and B and covers the full set of subtests. It can take between 30 to 85 minutes to complete. The brief form tests reading, spelling, and mathematics and can take anywhere from 10 to 40 minutes. Both the Y3 and the KT2 involve direct assessment with an individual child. The items in both measures are use visual, written, and verbal cues to draw out the common manifestations of oral expression. The Y3 oral expression subtest can take anywhere from 5 to 25 minutes, although there is no time limit. The examiner presents images to the students and records student responses in the response form. 
The KT2 oral expression subtest can take anywhere from 10 to 35 minutes, but just as in the Wyatt, there's no time limit. The examiner presents images to the students and records student responses verbatim. The authors of the KT2 do say that the examiners can use a tape recorder to ensure student responses are recorded precisely, but it is not required. <clears throat> for both measures of oral expression, administrators are directed to allow sufficient time for the student to respond and item prompts may be repeated as needed. The Y3 subtest of oral expression includes 34 items consisting of expressive vocabulary, oral word fluency, and sentence repetition tasks. For the expressive vocabulary items, the student looks at a picture in the stimulus book, then listens to a definition, and then states the word that matches. The oral word fluency items involve word retrieval where the student names as many items consistent within a conceptual category in 60 seconds. For example, the student could be asked to name as many hobbies as they can in one minute. The sentence repetition items are intended to measure oral syntactic knowledge and working memory. This is where the student listens to and repeats sentences word for word. On the 28-item KT2 subtest, Students are required to orally convey thoughts. Items emphasize greetings, questions, descriptions of events, persuasion, forming plurals and possessives, and constructing sentences from specific ideas or words. For the first 27 items, students provide responses based on a picture that the examiner shows them. For the last item, the examiner presents a situation orally and the students must act a part in this. Both measures utilize reversal rules and discontinue rules to determine start and stop points. For the Wyatt 3, raw scores for expressive vocabulary, oral word fluency, and sentence repetition are converted into standard scores using the age equivalent or grade equivalent norms. They are then summed to derive the oral expression raw score, which is finally converted into the composite standard score using the norm tables provided. During the testing session, student responses are recorded beneath each item and responses are scored according to the criteria provided. Raw scores are based on an integral scale of don't know, two point response, one point response, or zero. The big difference between the scoring of the two measures of oral expression is that the KT2 test is scored after the testing session. The basal and discontinue rules are based on preliminary item scores. After completing the item set, preliminary scores are counted to decide if the testing should continue. These preliminary scores are recorded next to the items, but are used only for test administration. They are to be re-evaluated when the final scoring is done. For the final scoring of the KT2, the examiner uses detailed criteria provided by the publisher. Each item contains several criteria that are scored dichotomously with a 1 or a 0. This For both measures, the standard score scale ranges from 40 to 160, with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Examiners can determine status scores, which include standard scores, percentile ranks, normal curve equivalents, and stay nines, or growth scores, which include equivalents or grade, age equivalents, and growth scale values. For both measures, scoring assistance software or hand scoring is used along with criteria set for the oral expression subtest. Uniquely, the KT2 provides a detailed quantitative summary of the types or patterns of errors a student makes on the oral expression subtest. By tracking error patterns, examiners can, can plan appropriate remedial instruction, specifically targeting the difficulties a student displays.
The y of 3 is a norm reference measure. The norming sample used to create standards included 2,775 students ranging from pre-kindergarten to grade 12. Normative data was collected throughout the fall of 2005 to the spring of 2008. The sample was selected to match the American population percentage for gender, ethnicity, and geographic region. In addition, data were obtained from students in special populations. Specifically, 4% of the sample population had identified learning disabilities in reading, writing, or mathematics. 1.9% had expressive language disorder, and 1% were identified as having attention deficit or hyperactivity disorder. The KT2 is also a norm reference measure. The norming sample used to create standards included 2,400 students from kindergarten to grade 12. This sample was taken from a nationally representative group between 2001 to 2003 during the school year. In addition, the KT2 can be used as a criterion. The internal consistency reliabilities for the KT2 were computed using the split half technique with adjustment for sampling differences between forms A and B. For the oral expression subtest, the mean internal consistency coefficient was reported at 0.87. Because this is below 0.9, it is not recommended that the oral expression subtest be used on its own in individual decision making. The internal consistency coefficient was not reported for the Y3 since the oral expression subtest does not have item level data. The split half reliability method was not appropriate in this case. Instead, test retest stability coefficients were used. The evidence of test retest stability for subtests and composite scores was obtained by administering the Y3 twice. Test retest intervals ranged from 2 to 32 days, and the test retest reliability coefficient for the or oral expression subtest was reported as 0.87, which authors deem suitable for making educational decisions. Test retest reliability was not reported for the KT2. Since the Y3 only has one form, it did not report alternate form reliability. Comparatively, the KT2 does have two forms. The alternate form reliability for oral expression subtest was 0.58 and was the lowest reported for the KT2. This indicates possible inconsistency between the oral expression subtest on each form. Because of the nature of oral expression, a main goal of both test designs was to construct and explain scoring rules clearly to increase inter-rater reliability. The inter-rater reliability coefficients for the Y3 were calculated using the interclass correlation procedures and were reported as 0.99 and 0.98 for the oral words fluency and sentence repetition, respectively, both very high. Inter-rater reliability for the KT2 subtest was found to be 0.88, which is adequate, but not exceptional. The authors of both measures went to considerable efforts to ensure validity of items on the oral expression subtests. The Y3 and the KT2 have described a thorough process of literature review, market research, expert advisory panels, pilots, trials, field testing, and revisions in order to ensure content validity both during the initial stages of development and after. After data collection, both measures exhausted statistical analysis of critical factors. To address concurrent criterion validity, the Y3 was administered along with several other achievement tests. Students were tested anywhere from the same day up to 30 days apart from taking the Y3. KT2 students were tested anywhere from the same day up to 60 days apart from taking the KT2. In each concurrent study, the Y3 and the other tests were administered in counterbalanced order, meaning approximately half of the cases took the Y3 first and the other half took the Y3 second. The same counterbalance process occurred during the standardization of the KT2. 
For both measures, no values related to predictive validity or diagnostic efficiency were reported. The Y3 and the KT2 oral expression items show medium to high face validity. Upon reviewing both stimulus books and student response forms, I believe that the authors have adequately designed the items to accurately measure expressive language. The two oral word fluency items, however, in the Y3 oral expression subtest do have a one minute time frame, which for some students may inhibit their ability to think clearly and therefore I might question the validity of those two items. For the rest of the Wyatt 3 oral expression subtest, there is no time limit, but the sentence repetition tasks seem to measure memory instead of oral expression specifically. For those reasons, I would say that the Wyatt 3 demonstrates medium face validity overall. In terms of construct validity, information specifically reported on oral expression comparisons was lacking. The authors of the Wyatt 3 measure did report some moderate convergence. Oral expression scores showed a correlation coefficient of 0.81 when compared to the WAS 4. The oral expression subtest for the KT2 measure did not show any correlations worth reporting though there were some correlation between the KT2 oral expression subtest and the WJ3 oral language domain. In most of the comparable measures, the oral language domain was not broken down into the oral expression and listening comprehension subtests as they were in the Wyatt 3 and KT2. Finally, since the authors of the KT2 identified that a main goal for the development of their measure was to differentiate the oral expression subtest, I have presented the correlation coefficients which do suggest discriminant validity. When compared to the KT2 written expression subtest and the Wyatt2 oral expression subtest, the correlations are relatively low, indicating divergence. There is still a small level of correlation between these measures as they are all cognitive measures and will therefore show moderate correlation. There is no discriminant data to report for the Wyatt 3. I'd like to conclude this presentation with a discussion of the pros and cons of each selected measure. I would recommend both measures for their use in educational settings, but ultimately if I had to select one based on the oral expression subtest, I would recommend the KT2. The Wyatt 3 reports very high inter-rater inter reliability, which is desirable and the oral expression subtest is easy to score. However, the Y3 is more complex to administer and much more expensive. This added cost in time and money is concerning as resources are limited in the educational field. The KT2, on the other hand, is a little more difficult to score, but very easy to administer. It offers two forms and is cheaper for schools to purchase. Most importantly, the authors of the KT2 have highlighted a critical aspect of the relationship between oral and written expression. Due to item design, examiners can compare student scores on the KT2 oral expression subtest with their scores on the written expression subtest. Significant differences in these two scores can indicate learning disabilities specific to writing. Lastly, the authors of the KT2 have included an error analysis to aid in individualized instruction and offer strategies to support instructional interventions. If you'd like to investigate these measures further, please feel free to use these references. Thank you for listening.